All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the other side of the country, from Greensboro, North Carolina, by Jerome Myers. How are you doing, Jerome? Great, John. How are you, man? Good to be with you. Absolutely. And uh, Jerome is an award-winning engineer turned business strategist and uses his rich experience and insights of uh, innate understanding of human emotions to ensure that your journey from the corporate world to entrepreneurship is a fulfilling one. You know, having worked in a, a division of a multi-billion fortune 500 company, you created a thriving 20 million uh, division operation with over 175 people. You now employ that experience to advise leaders across diverse industries. And uh, your efforts to guide, uh, and, and then you work with the uh, North Carolina Ag Agriculture and Technical State University Entrepreneurship Advisory Board, driving entrepreneurial progress. That was easy for me to say. <laughs> and uh, and as the host of the Dreamcatchers podcast, you assist founders in addressing the six centers of doubt they will face following a significant life transition. And what we're going to talk today about is the founder's exit uh, paradox. So, so Jerome, just for a moment, just define what you mean by the exit paradox. Yeah, man. So I think the majority of folks who are having an exit think that they're going to get the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and everything's going to be better. Mm -hmm. But what we found is that the detachment from the thing mm -hmm. that they spent the time building usually is 15, 25, maybe even 35 or 40 years is something that turns their world upside down. They go from a place of certainty and confidence to a place of complete and utter uncertainty and lacking confidence in what their purpose is in life and who they're supposed to be impacting. And so we work really hard to help people avoid those feelings and the six centers of doubts that most of that stems from. Yeah. And and I guess, uh, do you know, like most transit, you know, like most big transitions in life, I mean, it's almost like a little death in some ways, isn't it? Like when there's when something that was so central to your life is suddenly gone. And as you said, yeah, maybe you got the financial rewards, but that doesn't seem to. But you still feel dislocated. Yeah, 100 percent. And the way we think about it, and we talked about the six center of Dow, or we've at least said those that phrase three or four times at this point is self image, relationships, work, health, prosperity and significance. And so when you sell the thing, we just take the first three, your self image changes because most people introduce themselves as a person who does this for this company. Mm -hmm. Like that is kind of the beginning and the end. The next level is the relationship. So outside of the people that you live with, the people you work with are the folks that you spend the most time with. So if you walk away from an enterprise, the majority of your relationships are going to be gone. And then the last one is the work. So the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, the structure, the routine, the habits are usually tied to how you're going to be spending your working day. And so if you take those three things away, which we believe are the core mm -hmm. of most people's lives, and they're also the stress, that is created in most people, other sources of the stress that are created in most people's lives, then you end up in a space where you don't feel grounded, you don't feel connected, and you're wondering what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. And so it's our goal to really help people have the awareness, one, and that's part of the reason why we're here today, that mm -hmm. something like that can happen. And you mentioned the mini death. I think a lot of people choose not to sell their business because they're scared of that. Right. And they miss out on the opportunity to harvest the wealth that they built, but because they're scared that they're going right. to experience some pain. Mm -hmm. And we think that's a an atrocity. We think that's a tragedy. The only thing that gets worse is when they sell it and then they actually feel all the feelings, but they get blindsided by it. So they think that they're the only ones. They end up in this place of shame and they kind of try to hide the fact that they're experiencing this from right. other people. And so we want to one, normalize the conversation two, let people know that there's help available. And then three, uh, get more people to the place where they aren't scared to have the exit. They aren't scared about the little death, just like relationships or just like any other relationship, sure. the relationship with your business is going to end. Yeah. And, and you can either plan for that or not. And we're help. We want to encourage people to plan for that. Yeah. And one of the things is, as you said about, you know, uh, self image, right. 
I mean, it seems like it seems like a paradox in some ways. Like you would think, you know, if you successfully exited, then you're, you know, you'd have you'd be really proud. You'd have a great self image and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But but sometimes it doesn't happen that way. And that's probably a big surprise, as you said, to a lot of people that their feelings aren't what they expected them to be and their their self image isn't what they expected it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's. It's, I think it's not what they expect there to be because they've lost themselves in the things that they've been doing. They're not intentionally seeking out and developing themselves outside of what they do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a tragedy that I think just far too many people, uh, it's a trap and it's not a tragedy. It's a trap that far too many people fall into. And so one of my favorite mentors, friends, uh, he he says you've got to establish identity outside of what you do for what you do to earn money. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear people say things like, this is what I do for a living. No, it's what you do to earn money. And there's so much, so many more facets. There's so many more roles that are part of your life and defining yourself by those things and exploring other interests so that you can replace uh, some of that time that you were allocating to your work when you're in a space where you don't have to work as much because maybe work becomes optional because you have an eight, nine or 10 figure exit. That is what we want people to prepare for so that they are able to step over that fear, right? We want to exit to excellence. We don't want to exit and then feel a great loss. We want to exit and then go do greater. And so right. that second mountain is what I believe uh, most founders aren't ever exposed to or the concept that there is another mountain that they can climb and they haven't peaked. Um, yeah. One of the examples we love to use is, you, I think everybody knows a, a varsity football quarterback or the head cheerleader who's still living that out, even right. though they're 20, 30 or 40 years removed from high school. And we worry that a lot of founders get stuck in that mold where, you know, the good old days was when they were doing this or that right. with their old company. And I want them to know that their best days are ahead of them. And if they can figure out how to get in purpose and on purpose, now that they have the freedom of time and capital, that they can do things that will impact the world in a meaningful way that will lead to significance right. and actually having true success instead of just financial success. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a couple of things there. I just wanted to pick up on uh, is number one, as you said, is their whole life may have been wrapped up in work. Right. And they don't actually have any, you know, because they never felt they had time for any outside interests or anything else. So it was all wrapped up. So when that goes away, there's obviously, there's obviously that that huge void. And the other thing I think it's interesting as human beings, I, you know, when we're out of something or we look back at something, we tend to often cherry pick and look back with rose tinted glasses and think, oh, mm -hmm. you know, things were fantastic. And we forget about, you know, the, the rough times, the hard times, the, you know, all of that kind of thing. And and sometimes it prevents us looking forward because we look back at this stuff and we think, oh, that was great. Yeah, I think a lot of people romanticize the path. And the funny part is we get to make up a lot of our memories. We get to decide what they mean for us. Any action, right? You could talk about the fact, the thing that happened, but we get to decide what it means for us in the moment and then looking back on it. And so if you built a big business and you were able to sell it, you can say, oh man, I lost that. And it means that I don't have anything to live for, or you know, I've peaked and my greatest success is behind me. Or you can say, now I've got the resources. I've got the time, talent, and the treasure so that I can go off and invest. And we call it pills, proceeds invested for lasting legacy. You can go out and invest in a way that's going to create a significant impact that's going to change the way that the world moves and operates. And I think that is what leads to fulfillment. If you look at some of the families that uh, founded America or helped mm -hmm. America move to that next space, you think about the Rockefellers and um, some other well-recognized names, you're, you're gonna see that they made those investments. You're gonna see their names on buildings and um, attached to names of colleges and universities. And you know they wanted, they knew that the success wasn't just how much money can I keep for my family and pass down to my descendants. It was going and actually self-transcending and making an impact in the community. And so 
we want to encourage people to actually explore that because I think a lot of founders, um, they're first generation wealth creators. And mm -hmm. when you're a first generation wealth creator, it can shock you when you actually end up in that space where good things are happening for you because there's so much struggle, there's so much turmoil in the beginning. But for those who actually make it through and endure, I think there's some real opportunity to do good and not just do good for the people that live at your house. Yeah, no, and I think that's I, I think that's an incredibly powerful point there because I mean one of the ones you mentioned here as as your uh, transition is is that that idea of significance, right? And so it can be, you know, you you can go away from like feeling a great level of significance in your business to afterwards feeling that you're kind of insignificant. However, if you look at it in the way that you've just outlined, your opportunity to have even greater significance even is there because now you have the wherewithal to choose where you want to make an impact in the world. Yeah. And I think that choice is what we're all chasing. We're like, we talk about freedom, but it's all about the options. And so imagine your ability to be able to solve any problem in the world that you want and you have the resources available to you, whether they're personally available to you or you're able to get connected to them. And now the question is, well, what is that problem? And then what is my strategy for solving them? And so we've got this really cool experience. We call it the next intensive where we'll walk people through that process to help them identify the thing that they're going to work on next, because we feel like finding your next is the thing that's going to be a game changer for you. Mm -hmm. And most people are just trying to figure out what was the path and how can mm -hmm. I recreate what was in the past? But if you're exiting and you're exiting the excellence, then your next is the thing that I think you want to focus on. And this is the thing that we found in our lab. The people who had something to move on to were the ones that were able to navigate the exit paradox faster and then assimilate or create that new uh, situation for themselves where they have the certainty, they have the confidence, and they actually feel like they're making impact, they're making progress. And those things are what I think most folks are most mm -hmm. interested in or desire the most on in the latter years of their life. So what are some examples, obviously not names or everything, but what are some examples that you've worked with of people who've who've successfully done this? And 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 have you ever had a uh, have you had a uh, experience where people are are kind of surprised about the next when they find their next? They're surprised and they're like, going, wow, this is this is this is not what I expected in a good way. Yeah, I, I remember one of the guys that I've spent a fair amount of time with, he hated school as a, as a child. Uh, he would pretend like he wasn't paying attention. He would um, do things to kind of agitate and irritate the teachers. And when he did that, it was just because he thought that they counted him out and they didn't think that he had a whole lot of potential. Mm -hmm. You see, he went on, he built a big technology company and then on the backside of it, he was able to buy all the things he wanted to buy. I still remember him telling me a story about um, him working as a, like a 14 year old and saving up enough money to be able to buy a car and then his mother taking that car from him. And so as uh, Neo, a newly exited operator, he went out and bought all of the exotic cars that I think any man could want <laughs> and nobody's taking those cars from him now. Well, fast forward, he uses those cars now to entice young people to be interested in furthering their education. They have an education company that like partners, uh, people who are studying math and science with tutors who can help them, you know, do better in those uh, subjects. And that is his post exit next, right? That is what he's working on growing and building because he sees a real opportunity to fix the education system. One, because it fell for him. Two, because he believes that the education was the thing that helped him transcend from the class that he was right. in into being one of the wealthiest people um, that I've ever met um, as a result of the things that he learned. But he learned it through self-education and not the traditional system. And that is what he feels is missing. The right. belief that we need to continue to learn after we finish high school, college, our graduate degrees, and those skills that we uh, develop, uh, learn, grow, are the things that are actually going to make a transformation in our lives. 
Yeah. And the, and the great thing that you're talking about there is like, you know, anybody can learn stuff and gather knowledge, but you know, wisdom comes with age and experience. There's no, there's no way around that. So the people you're working with, like, for instance, the example you just used there, um, didn't like school, all of that, but later on, like realized, like, number one, the education system wasn't working for a lot of people or isn't working for a lot of people. But second off, the importance of it, that kind of wisdom. So there's a lot of wisdom in in these uh, in these people who are doing the exits that can really benefit the world. 100 percent. And like you don't achieve that level of success, right? You don't build an exitable company if you're not talented or cornered a market or a niche that other people weren't able to uh, corner. So I, it's our belief that that wisdom, that sage wisdom that they have is meant to be shared. And it's not just the wisdom, but it's also their talent. Like they had to have some unique ability that allowed them to do what they did. And so what I really hate to see is when people come in, they build a business, they get the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, they have money, they have a lot of time. Now they actually have time to consider the things that they ignored while they were building and they get depressed, they go in a hole and then they feel worthless and they don't feel like they matter and they don't feel like they can help. And those things keep them from showing up for the folks who are counting on them to come back and share their wisdom and knowledge so that they can model their process their journey after them mm -hmm. and then there's the uh, and obviously i mean one of the other ones you mentioned here is health as well because uh mm -hmm. let's face it and sometimes when you're just running 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 um that adrenaline is keeping you going and then afterwards if that goes away as you said you know, you can end up depressed you know mental health issues whatever physical health issues everything is connected so there is a real there is a real connection between that and the impact it has on your mental and physical well-being yeah and the question that we see most people struggling with when they're in the six centers of doubt whenever as it relates to health is did i give up my health to get my wealth mm. and will i have to give up all of my wealth to get my health back because a man that does not have his health will give up everything and anything for it. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the sh struggles that I think is very avoidable. We teach our model in, this, in the way that we do because we want people to have their health so that they don't have to go backwards when they get their wealth. But right. if you're in the place where you gave up your health to get your wealth, it's not something that's irreversible. We can do the things that are necessary using our methodology. We call it the silver bullet for optimal health to help people get to that space where they're in peak performance condition so that they have the longevity, they have the energy necessary for them to go climb that second mountain. Mm -hmm. And then and the other part, as you said, I mean, starting to obviously build new relationships, because a lot of the relationships that you have, probably the relationships that have been most significant to you in many ways, you know, outside your family have been all these work related ones. Mm -hmm. And now maybe you've got to go build relationships with, a, with a, maybe a new diverse set of mm -hmm. people. And without your kind of company, you kind of feel a little unprepared. Well, the unprepared part is one, but I think the other part of it is, well, what do I talk about? Yeah. A lot of folks don't think they're that interesting or because the business consumes so much of their mental bandwidth, they don't really have a lot of interests, hobbies, things they do for fun outside of that. Mm -hmm. And so going to the party and having small talk is not something that's going to intrigue or excite them. And so we're looking for that next mountain so that they can anchor in against that and then talk about their new passion project and sprinkle in some of the stuff that's happened in the past. What we found is people have a really hard time talking about the right now. What mm -hmm. they can talk about really easily, though, is the past and what they see for the future. And so when folks are navigating or yeah, navigating the founders exit paradox, what their struggle is if they don't have their next then all they can do is talk about the past. When we talk about the uh, high school quarterback or the varsity cheerleader, they don't have, they don't see a future, right? So mm -hmm. they don't like the now, they don't see a future, so they're stuck in the past. And so the faster that we can help people get into a vision of the future, then things become a lot more clear for them and they're able to walk down the path. And, you know, so many people get stuck John, and they believe that 
they got to know every step and see everything, right? They come from that place of yeah. uh, confidence or they come from that place of certainty because the system has been working, the business is predictable. Uh, now we want to get them directionally correct. You don't have to know all the steps. You just have to start going in the right direction. And as you get closer to your destination, the path will be revealed. And some people are like, oh, that sounds crazy. But think about it. The last time you drove at night, mm -hmm. you couldn't see everything. You could only see what the headlights revealed to you. And as you advance with the headlights, you are able to see more. Mm -hmm. And so this is the same journey. You're going out into the dark. And you got limited vision, you got limited focus, but you know which direction you're supposed to head in. Yeah. Well, listen, this is absolutely fascinating work you're doing, Jerome. Uh, all of Jerome's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So our goal is to help people get clear on what their next is. We've got this proprietary process called the next intensive where you come in, I interview you for two hours. I go out and process that. And then I come back and for two hours, you've got one assignment to argue with me. I need you to argue with me about all the things that I got wrong and processing the data that you gave me. And when I do the interview, I'm getting a comprehensive set of data so that we can get a very clear understanding of how you got to where you are the things that are holding you back, any gaps and skill sets so that we know what is preventing you from going to that next level. And then once we put that plan in front of you, you kind of have to do something about it. Now, you don't have to do anything with us. You can go do it with other people or you can go do it by yourself. But we want people to be inspired. We want people to be in motion. And it's our belief that if we can get more founders who have found their freedom financially to go off and do work on purpose and in purpose, mm -hmm. the world will be a much better place. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, can, I couldn't agree with that more, Jerome, to be honest. And, and that's what we need is we need more people doing things, you know, on, on, on their community level, on their level, like spreading out as opposed to, you know, a lot of people can sit around, uh, pro, pro, uh, procrastinating and talking about different things and all of that, but actually going out and doing something that has an impact. I mean, if more people did that, obviously the world would be a better place. Less talking, more doing, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. That's the way the game works. Yeah, listen, thanks again, Jerome. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thanks, John.